Hi everyone. Sorry, I uh, I can't be uh, in Dublin uh, uh, this time. I really enjoyed um, uh, the uh, Cetha BIM gathering last time when I was there, but unfortunately, our Building Smart Summit is uh, at the same time now. So I'm uh, recording this from a hotel room, and um, I uh, I hope to either see you next time at the Building Smart Summit or um, see you next time at the Cetha BIM gathering in person again. Uh, really looking forward to it. So the title of this presentation was about um, the the full uh, solution stack of Building Smart. So that basically means a lot of abbreviations and a lot of different standards. Um, so I thought it would be handy to start uh, at the beginning. Really, most of our construction projects, infrastructure buildings, uh, whatever kind of assets, start with someone having a great idea and wanting to communicate that to someone else. And that's where already uh, things get lost in translation or confusion. So we invented drawings, which work really well. We got better and better at it, and at some point we even um, were uh, capable of making them digital, which was very efficient as well. Um, at a later time, uh, we got smarter with this digitalization, and we started to do this object-oriented stuff, which was called um, uh, smart buildings, digital construction, uh, and eventually uh, we seem to be have settled on BIM. And with these BIM models, uh, we could automate tasks like uh, automated quality control, automated uh, cluster detection between different disciplines, and obviously also automated simulations, energy simulations, evacuation simulations, um, you name it. And this is really what it's all about. This is about digitalization of the construction industry. It's about automation, making sure we have automated cost estimations, automated scheduling, automated whatever, because that's really where the uh, efficiency the gains comes in. And when you have these abilities to do this early in a design process, the, uh, the end result also gets a lot more effective. So this is all about data. So why are data standards so important? Well, to make sure that we talk about the same thing. This floor uh, thing in a staircase, is that part of the staircase or is it part of a floor? That's important to have the same definition when you do cost estimation or planning. Who pays for that? Um, and is it, a, is it part of the responsibility of the floor manufacturer or the staircase manufacturer? Um, so these are, it's important to have standards because of that reason. And of course, uh, second, most important, maybe the reason uh, is this automatic uh, processing. Uh, because these data structures are standardized, computers can automatically process it. Um, so the computer works for you, and this is about the automation. So it's not about um, machine readable, because this PowerPoint presentation and PDFs are also machine readable. It is really about computer interpretable. Have the computer work for you. That's what this is all about. And then finally, standards can also help in comparison and learning. If you do this a lot over time, you can see patterns and uh, learn from that and improve. So this is why data is so important and why standardized data is so important. But then if you have data, you would also still need to access it. Um, that can be a challenge. So this is why we come to this topic of open data. Why is an open standard so important? So open data is data that you can freely access, but an open standard is a definition, a specification of data structures that is openly available. So you can still share your BIM models privately and you still retain the copyright and the ownership, um, but the definition of how that data is structured, that is openly accessible for everyone. Um, and that's pretty handy because then every software vendor can create a software tool to be able to open your data set. You don't, you're not forced to buy a certain software tool to deal with your data. So you don't have a lock-in. So you control your digital destiny. You can choose any tool you want that support this open standard. And all of the software vendors have the availability uh, and have the uh, capability of supporting this because it's all freely available. Open standards are also important because they drive consensus and collaboration in the industry. So we have to agree on something 
we have to agree on that floor thing in a staircase and uh, what it's part of. Um, and um, instead of one party setting a standard and uh, trying to force it on the industry, open standards are really based on consensus and collaboration. So that's what we call open BIM, open definitions, open specifications of standards. There's more standards out there. There's also more open standards out there. There's a lot of BIM standards out there that really work very well and very efficient in practice, but at the long term, uh, the open BIM solutions are uh, trumping these uh, because you have much more flexibility and can really um, define your own workflows much better. I think the most famous open BIM standard is IFC, the industry foundation classes. And also when you look at the license, for example, and the latest publication, it's all publicly available at the website from buildingsmart.org. It's very transparent who changed things, uh, when, who were the contributors to this. You can help suggest yourself. We even have links. If this page is unclear to you, let us know so we can improve. Uh, everything's versioned, of course, and traceable. Um, so this is a strong part of an open standard and uh, maintained by Building Smart. So when we look at an IFC stair, for example, in IFC, um, it, it has a huge list. It has quite some consensus. It is a, a pretty decent um, uh, standard, I would say. Um, and there's a lot of these uh, things inside IFC, and all of them are publicly available. So they are published under a Creative Commons license, which basically says you can do anything with it that you want, as long as you don't make changes. So this is a nice balance between a standard, because if everyone is able to change it, then it's not a standard anymore, and computers don't know how to interpret it. Uh, but also open, everyone can use it, everyone can help change it uh, based on a consensus-driven process. And this consensus-driven process is what we do within Building Smart. Um, I'm not sure if some of you know Building Smart. We're a global organization. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, chapters worldwide. I think we are covering about uh, 20 different regions now. Uh, recently, we added Brazil and, um, and India. And also Ireland is represented as a formal chapter uh, together with the UK. We have a lot of members. We are a membership-driven organization. We have different membership levels, uh, which uh, give you uh, different perks. The full list is on uh, on our website, but as you see, uh, the, uh, the big names are all popping up here. Um, and um, we have a lot of different working groups that work on the different standards and uh, best practices and use cases. So what needs to be in IFC? How big does it really need to be? Because there's a lot of stuff already in there, especially in the latest 4.3 version. A lot of info extensions have been added. Um, it's pretty packed with a lot of uh, strong semantic definitions. But there will always be uh, stuff that is not in there. If you search for something Irish, um, I can't find any anything specifically Irish inside IFC. Um, so is it big enough? How big should it be? Um, are, are we allowing these um, uh, regional standards to also become part of IFC? How is that organized? So the reason why IFC is called industry foundation classes is because they are intended as the foundation. So everything in IFC um, it can be uh, is in there because it could be globally agreed on. <coughs> so things like IFC stair, for example, <coughs> is a specific kind of IFC product, <clears throat> so it also inherits uh, certain properties from products. Um, and uh, stairs are uh, very global, very generic. There's like 20 different types in there. There's a, a, a couple dozen properties that you can connect to stair, but there's always a, a limit. So uh, the, the, this foundation is what we put in IFC. So IFC has quite some uh, different modules already. It has a, a core kernel, has some shared entities, but also different modules like architecture, infrastructure, um, et cetera, et cetera. But this is the foundation. And on top of that, you can extend it with uh, specific doors, like industrial, uh, sorry, specific stairs, like industrial stairways, or even a company-specific stairways. Um, these things do not belong in uh, IFC because they are not part of the foundation of our industry. These things are extending or 
even better amending IFC uh, to be able to work together with IFC. So that's that's roughly the split. There's always nuances and a gray area, but roughly industry foundation classes are the foundation. Um, the, uh, everything we can globally agree on is part of the IFC standards and everything that can amend IFC uh, really works together very well with IFC. Um, as you also already noticed, we have uh, these uh, different additional classifications and property sets that work together with IFC. Um, we we uh, have a, a tool, a service, an online database that we call the Building Smart Data Dictionary, and this is where we allow all of these standards to link to each other, link to IFC, amend IFC, um, and uh, publish in this uh, dictionary. So the Building Smart Data Dictionary, if you search for STAIR, for example, you see on the left that there's a lot of different libraries in there, uh, ETIM, Dutch classification systems, UniClass, uh, CCI is a, a, a Norwegian, I think, or um, a Danish standards. Um, so you would see a lot of different staircases um, and if you zoom into them, for example, this one, the Danish CCI standard flight of stairs, you see that it's linked to IFC um, and it also has some uh, uh, some uh, relations to uh, to uh, to uh, IFC entities and elements and uh, properties. So the linked data strategy for Building Smart uh, really comes to play here as well. Um, so. Uh, we uh, we use the Building Smart Data Dictionary to um, allow everyone to make links between these standards and publish them uh, there as well. Um, for those who are interested, all of this is also based on several ISO standards. And again, uh, this is uh, just like IFC, versioned, uh, linked, or everything has unique URIs to facilitate uh, linking also outside of the BSDD to make sure that we do not um, lock in people to this database. I can talk for hours about the BSDD. I think it's a very useful tool. Even when you don't use IFC, this is still a very useful tool to exchange properties and uh, classification reference and additional agreements in your company or in your region. Um, so um, I'm, I'm quite happy to uh, redirect you to bsdd.buildingsmart.org for more information. We have a very good uh, product manager called Arthur Tomjak. Um, he's, uh, he's very uh, able and willing to help you. There's also quite some videos online already um, that uh, really show you the power of the BSDD and how it can help productivity in your uh, in your engineering or design environment. So I'm already um, over half of my time, but not half of the slides. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. Um, so what we did so far is uh, we talked about what is open and why is it so important. We talked about this foundation-based uh, definition of the industry called IFC. And we talked about BSDD, which is a service. Um, other things that I still uh, have in my slides are IDS, the Information Delivery Specification Standard, uh, BCFs, uh, APIs, and uh, a little bit touching on uh, software certification and uh, professional certification. But uh, I guess I'm running out of time for that. Um, so uh, yeah, let's dive into this IDS because that's usually uh, the start of any kind of process. When you uh, simplify any process, it usually starts with, I have requirements, I want to do something, so I need certain data, and uh, these are the, the requirements that I have. Please deliver this data to me so I can use it. Then you produce a data set, you check if it uh, complies to the original requirement, and maybe check a little bit more on that as well, and then you share uh, the data or the results of the check with others. So these requirements are the base, and we see a lot of requirements that are not good examples, I would say. I need LODs, this, I want IFC, just send me anything you have. I need a product data template, I need a digital building passport. That's really not specific enough. Um, so we're trying to push the industry to be specific. So for, if we stay on the, uh, on the uh, theme of the stairs, there should be at least one stair. Every stair must have a property number of risers, and the value needs to be at least more than one. This is where IDS comes in. The information delivery specification is a building smart standard that allows you to, um, to, 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 uh, to, to get these requirements and structure them in an XML format so they are computer interpretable and machine readable. Um, as you see, it's an XML format, but you can also, um, there are viewers that transform that into contractual text that you can add as an addendum to your contract 
So you have the contractual text plus the actual uh, computer interpretable uh, parts as well to be most efficient. So then someone produces uh, IFC, so you get an IFC file. I'm sure most of you are uh, aware of how to do that. Um, the nice thing is that this Building Smart Data Dictionary can have uh, references uh, in both of these things. So if you want to do an IFC file, <coughs> sorry, if you have an IDS file where you say I need to have a flight of stairs and this is the one that I mean, you can point to uh, using that a link uh, to the BSDD uh, where there's a full description and ownership and examples, etc., etc. And also in IFC, you can say this is a flight of stairs according to that definition in, uh, the, in the BSDD. So adding links inside an IFC file to the BSDD is something that we see more and more to facilitate this need. So uh, if there's anything you remember from, from this presentation, I'm, I'm, uh, you, you don't even have to fully understand it because I, uh, I know it's difficult to, uh, to watch uh, a screen from someone online and to grasp all of this. Uh, but this, uh, this trifecta of uh, BSDD, IDS and IFC is, is extremely efficient and extremely important. So, um, yeah, please, uh, please, please plant that seed in your head to, uh, to uh, work with that in the future. So then we have a, a check. You can obviously check uh, if an IFC file uh, complies to the original requirements in IDS, but you can also check more. And this is again where this uh, standardization of data comes in to be very efficient. Um, but then if you did a check and something is wrong with the door, you know, the second one from the left um, in the in the third floor, the red one, uh, how do you communicate that um, at that most effective and efficient way, the building smart way, is to do it with BCF, which stands for BIM Collaboration Format. Again, an XML structure, but also available as an API to uh, directly communicate with uh, online services where you can um, add a, even a camera viewpoint, how to look at the object, a priority, assign it to someone. So this is a very effective way of uh, communicating these kind of issues. So then we have IDS. IFC and BCF. The final one is uh, OpenCDE. Um, uh, this is a relatively new set of standards. This is actually a container term that uh, we use to uh, define the different API standards that we have. And uh, yeah, again, since I'm running out of time, I'm going to skip over this relatively quickly. Uh, but this is about being very efficiently to communicate uh, between uh, online and offline tools. Um, so imagine you uh, you want to have an IFC file to check it. You go to a CDE, you log in, you go to the, the correct project, to the correct file, you download it, you open it in another application, and then you run a check. Thanks to the OpenCDE initiatives and the standardizing of uh, interfaces, you can um, uh, immediately from your checking tool say, give me the IFC file, and it automatically loads from the CDE. Very interesting. Uh, this is currently on the voting to become a candidate standard, but there's already quite some, uh, quite some uh, uh, um, software implementations out there, and this is ready to use. So to uh, to wrap up a little bit, if we talk about Open BIM and the Building Smart Way, uh, it's really this collection of standards: IDS, IFC, BCF, and Open CDE that we mean. There's, of course, more. We have a validation service to check if your IFC file is actually structured according to the specification and to the standards. We have a tool to share best practices called the UCM, the Use Case Management Service. Uh, we have translations frameworks, etc., etc. So um, uh, together with these uh, tools and the BSDD, of course, that I already mentioned, BSDD, UCM, validation, um, and uh, the additional software certification and professional certification are all things that uh, Building Smart is uh, is working on to uh, yeah, to improve the productivity of the industry and to make sure that we can deal with all of the um, uh, the major challenges that we have. Um, yeah, as I said, running out of time, so uh, I would love to dive in more into what we're doing with uh, modernizing software certification. Uh, the professional certification program really has a boost uh, thanks to Celine Bent, our compliance director, who's on the job now for a little bit over a year and has a major impact. Uh, the validation service is something that I highly encourage everyone to try 
Um, uh, there's you know, way too much to talk about. Uh, I actually have a standard presentation that uh, takes a couple of hours and I was uh, a little bit forced to squeeze it into 20 minutes now. So if there are any questions, please um, feel free to just reach out. My email address is uh, leon.vanbello at buildingsmart.org. Also, uh, feel free to just uh, WhatsApp me. That usually works pretty well. Um, happy to answer any kind of uh, additional questions. Thank you for your attention. Uh, looking forward to meeting you in person uh, one day um, uh, again and uh, have fun uh, with the rest of the conference. Thank you.